good boy. Okay, so Stewie and I are going to demonstrate how I trim the length around the paws. <clears throat> We've already demonstrated how to trim paw pads, and I like to maintain I like to maintain the length of the coat right at the feet so it doesn't drag on the ground because I find that this area gets dirty very fast um, and also it's prone to mats. He picks up sticks and other debris. Um, if you can tell, he went, he went out in the yard. It was a little moist outside today. So he's already he's already a little damp, which I think is good for purposes of this video because I tend to spray him slightly with a little bit of water just so I can grab the uneven hairs. Um, so I'm going to start by from like his elbow area down. I comb through the hair to make sure that I have pretty much all of it and an even surface to work with. So I want all the hair that's on his leg. I gather it up in my hand. And then I just pull away anything that comes from his chest or other areas. This is really a two-part part process. Um, I need to trim the underneath around the paw as well as the top, so I'll show you how I do both aspects. And I brush through it to make sure it's even and straight. He was outside, so he's a little funky. Okay, so I spread the hair out across my hand, almost like a giant flower because I want a nice round shape to the paws. And I know the length that I need after, you know, two years of grooming him, where I'm happy with the length so it doesn't drag past the ground. I just want it to gently fall on the ground, um, which you're at least, I'm gonna say an inch to two inches of hair growth past the paws. It depends on your preference. Um, he's just a little long for my taste, not much, but a little. I trim weekly, every week to two weeks, to maintain the length. I have a pair of um, trimming shears that I bought from Chris Christensen. Chris Jenshin. <laughs> Can't get it out today. Anyway, um, <clears throat> they just have their trimming shears. They have a slight curve. Stay. And they're point they're rounded on the end so you don't poke the dog. Stay. He's a little nervous about his front feet. And I'm just gonna take off, I want to say a quarter of an inch in a circular direction all the way around. And I tighten my grip so I can judge my circle. And I pretty much um, just call them booties. So we're making him booties, okay? So he doesn't need a lot to come off. And I use my face comb just to make sure that I have all the stray hairs. And I continue to brush it out around my um, wrist in that circular flower fashion. And kind of when I get around to the top, I tighten my grip so I can use what I've already cut as a guide to go around. Now, I'm not a professional groomer, and I'm not sure what they would do, um, but I'm very picky about having a nice round circle. And I don't like to trim too much because then when the dog's standing up, you see their nails. So you can use your fingers to push the hair over the nails to judge the length. You know, and I've come to have a pretty good eye at this point. I just eyeball it. So, I might flip the paw down a little bit. 
because I don't want him to have what's called Tinkerbell toes, where he looks like he has elf boots on and not slippers, not booties. They're pointy in the front and not round, and I like pointy. So he's done with that foot. <clears throat> Okay, and I'll move on to the back one. I'll use my wide end of my big comb to brush them out all nice and straight. And I'll gather everything that's on the leg and push away what I don't want. And my face comb to smooth it out. See, he's really long in the back right now. Um, he seems to have grown out quite a bit. But he d has lost kind of like that flower look on the bottom. And I'm just going to round them out again. In this case, I'm taking off about an inch in the back because he was a little long. And I go around the outskirts in a circular motion. As I get around towards his nails, I will tighten my grip so I can judge from what I've already cut, kind of have a little template already created. And then it's easier for me to take my shears and trim him. And I'm just going to check the top to make sure that I definitely eliminate that Tinkerbell toe effect um, because I don't want pointy. I want round. I want to make sure I don't flip past the nails because I don't want them to show when he's standing up. Okay, so we're just going to do one side um, for purposes of this video so it doesn't take up a lot of time. But I would do the same process around the other the other two paws that he's currently laying on. I would flip him over and trim the other two paws. So when I've trimmed the length on the feet, I'm going to push all this hair back because the hair, they have an extra paw further down. And that hair in between the extra paw and their paw pads tends to get matted. Yeah, he's nervous about the front one. So I have a pair of um, thinning shears that I usually just trim this hair with. And in his case, it's a little long. Oh, all right. Um, all right, he doesn't like that paw. But it's a little long. So you can either thin it out with your thinning shears like I'm doing right now. Because this area drags on the ground and causes mats, picks up debris. Or you could just get your regular shears and trim it as short as you need it to be. I usually just thin them out and I find that this solves the problem. Okay, and I'll push the hair away from his back paw so I can see that area in between, like right underneath the paw pads. And he's a little long back here. So I'm going to just trim it with my regular shears. And then use my thin shears to blend it in a little bit. Because sometimes when he picks his foot up, you could see the blunt line. And I don't like it. It's all preference. I like to have everything a little shorter, thinned out. Um, Remove some of the hair. Okay, so I like to do this unless he's really long and overgrown. I like to do it right after I give him a bath because I find that the hair, after I've straightened it and blow dried him, so much easier to have a good eye 
to make nice booties after you've blow dried him. Okay, so I'm going to ask him to stand up, and he doesn't really want to, um, because I want to check the length of the leg against the ground. The feet, the hair on the feet and the legs are like two different entities, so it's a, <clears throat> excuse me, allergies, a two-part process. I will stand him up on my grooming table. Comb him out so he's the hair straight. And I'm going to flip over my mat. Normally I get all the hair off the mat first, but for purposes of time, I'll do that later. Because the bottom end of this mat is not, um, it just has like a rubber bottom. And for me, this is the best thing to do. I flip it over so I don't clip the mat by accident with my shears. Okay. So now that he's standing up, sometimes I encourage him to because he wants to lay down. I'm going to just balloon the hair. I'm going to, like, fan it out so I can see the length. which I usually do a pretty good job underneath um, trimming around the feet so I don't have too much work to do. I just want it to be pretty much flush with the surface that he's standing on. And I go around underneath in a circular motion just very slowly. just to make sure that nothing's hanging on the ground. It's no big deal. It's quick, it takes a minute or two as long as he's agreeable. And this prevents the hair from dragging on the ground. If you want to, I don't know how easy it is to see it, if you want to get on the inside of the legs, you just lift the one leg up, smooth all the hair out, which see he's a little long, but he's not too bad because when he's completely dry, it's gonna poof up. And you can lift the leg up. <clears throat> and it's the same process in the back. I'll smooth the hair out so I can see the shape of the hair. And with him, I have to hold his tail out of the way. He makes me hold his tail out of the way. And I go around right at the base. Just to get the stray hairs and give them a nice even circle. Okay, if you want to get underneath, you hold the leg up. And then you have very clear access to the inside of the other leg. Well, oh, let's throw it in the towel. There's not nice. Did you get this? No, okay. okay. So even when he's sitting down, he likes to do that. Um, I like it when he's standing up. But when he sits down for me, I can get those stray hairs in the front. This probably isn't the best demonstration because he's not um, cooperating with me this morning. But you get the general idea. There's two parts. Sit, good boy. Here, you wait. So anyway, there's two parts to maintaining the length of the legs and the booties. You need to trim on the inside of the paw. The length on the inside of the paw. And then you need to trim the overall length of the leg. I like it flush to the ground. So I hope this is helpful. I don't feel like it was my best at describing how I go about this process because he's, you know, he's pretty much boycotting being on camera today. Um, and maybe when I trim Miss Lizzie or Miss Ellie another day um, I'll do a retake but you get the general idea
So we hope everybody has a good day. Bye, Stewie. Dewey wasn't a good boy today.